Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And we are back yet again with the first retrograde video of this year. It's none other than, as you know, the retrogression of Saturn. Saturn and Jupiter both go retrograde uh, around this time, April, May, June. And they stay until around uh, September, October every year almost. So, these are very long retrograde periods uh, because for obvious reasons that the planets are very slow moving planets and they take long time to uh, move from one zodiac sign to the other. So therefore, uh, the retrogression periods are also very longer. So I am uh, in drikpanchang.com now. So on 5th of June this year, 2022, Saturn is going to retrograde uh, in the sign of Aquarius, of course. And Saturn will be retrograde finally until 23rd of October. He's going to be direct. So you could see the entire month of June, July, August, September, and almost three weeks, three and a half weeks of October. Right. So roughly you could say beginning of June till the last week of October, uh, you will see the effects of Saturn retrograde because uh, some days before the retrogression of Saturn, he always goes uh, stationary, right? And then some days after the progression, which is on 23rd October, again, uh, there is a stationary period. So you could roughly say entire June to entire October, this retrograde will be there. Uh, this is 141 days of retrogression. This is New Delhi, uh, India, as per that time. Uh, but the interesting thing is Saturn is going to go back into uh, the sign of Capricorn, right? So I will give you that time also. So currently uh, Saturn had entered Aquarius, Kumbharashi on 29th of uh, April this year, 2022. And it will enter Capricorn, Makarashi on 12th of July this year, 2022. And then uh, it will again be retrograde, of course. And then 23rd October, it goes direct. And finally, on 17th uh, January 2023, it will enter Aquarius again. And then onwards, it will be retrograde, of course, next year. But it will not again enter Capricorn anymore. So this transit is just like the transit in 2017, uh, where Saturn had entered uh, Sagittarius in January, but in June, July, around that time when it was retrograde, it again went back to Scorpio, right? So it happens sometimes. So therefore, these are the dates. And uh, finally, uh, Saturn will be entering Aquarius. Now, many of you have asked me that I made the video on uh, Saturn transit into Aquarius, but the primary transit is happening next year. So why did I make it this year? Well, you got to understand that the transit is not calculated by when a planet is moving, uh, when a planet is not moving retrograde into uh, the previous sign. So, which means whenever a planet moves to a particular house, the next house, for example, that is the time of the transit, okay? So on 17 January, Saturn is re-entering Aquarius. So it does not mean that uh, Saturn will be entering Aquarius that time and you consider that Saturn is in Capricorn itself, all right, uh, till 17 January. No, absolutely not, because Saturn has already moved to Aquarius and this moment, movement, which we will experience now, is not the direct motion, it's the retrograde motion, right? So therefore, you can consider that Saturn has already moved back, uh, moved into Aquarius and now, due to some reason, uh, it's moving back to uh, Capricorn, right? So uh, the interesting thing is we have to understand why these retrogressions happen in the first place. So why does it happen that sometime, some in, in some years, uh, Saturn goes retrograde, but he stays in that sign itself, right? Like uh, previous year, previous year, Saturn was retrograde in Capricorn and he stayed in Capricorn, right? even the previous year. Uh, but uh, why does it happen uh, that sometimes Saturn goes retrograde and he goes to the previous sign, right? Now you may say, oh yeah, that's like, but natural if a planet is getting retrograde in the beginning degrees of a sign, then it's highly likely that the 
planet will go retrograde and go to the previous sign, right? So that's the astrological answer from a perspective of calculations, which you could say. But the thing is, uh, it just doesn't go retrograde in a particular sign and goes to the previous sign. It just doesn't happen just for no reason, right? So you've got to understand that uh, these are very important events, especially when it comes to Saturn, Rahu, Ketu and uh, Jupiter also these four planets because they are very slow moving planets right and that's exactly what we are going to discuss today so if you are new to the channel then please uh, subscribe to it down below and if you want a consultation from me regarding this retrograde transit of Saturn then please go to my website down in the description section what is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him irrespective of where is Saturn retrograding right so you got to understand what is retrogression first so Retrogression means the planet is going back to the basics. There is an agenda which the planet wants to fulfill, but it understands there is a backlog. It's like the homework is not yet done, right? So when we do not do the homework, what happens? We do not get entry into the class or we get a punishment, right? Next day morning. Remember those school, school days, you know, where... It was like, you know, the first hour of the day was always like uh, very intense. You know, who has done the homework, who hasn't? And everybody's trying to get it done somehow, right? I know you have done it. I have done it too. <laughs> so now is like, it's like a similar time. Well, you may say, but we are grown up right now. You know, like most of the audience that views uh, my channel, uh, they are from... Uh, 25 to 45 that's the primary range right most of them of course but there are people from all ranges of course uh, so you may say oh but we don't go to school right so how does it apply to us no that's not how it works it's working every day so therefore when saturn is going uh, back retrograde and he's entering capricorn so you got to understand that there is a homework in Capricorn, which maybe we have not completed. And that is why we need to go back there, right? So this is the retrogression of uh, planets. So uh, this is like, we do not have an option here. We must do the homework, right? We cannot cheat. We cannot copy. We cannot speak lies as we used to do in our school days, right? I mean, that's a fact of life. But we can't do it here because here it's the domain of Saturn planets especially Saturn because Saturn is the planet of karma of discipline of results of fructification of our efforts and our hard work and especially the sign of Capricorn resembles all these uh, traits of Saturn so Saturn rules two signs one is Capricorn and the other one is Aquarius but what's the difference the primary difference is Saturn's uh, sign Capricorn is representing all the hard aspects of Saturn, right? And Aquarius represents those aspects. See, Aquarius is the second from the sign of Capricorn, right? The next sign. So second house from Capricorn is Aquarius. So second house shows the gain of a particular house, right? So we know in astrology, there are some basic rules like 12th house is mm, the loss, of a particular house right 12 from 12 from a particular house uh, but similarly the opposite is for the second house so second house from any other house is the gain of that house so the gain of hard work the gain of your uh, efforts is seen in aquarius so therefore if you feel that there is an area in your life uh, where you are not able to get results then maybe it's time that we look back and ponder what is it that we have not done uh, in a way that should have been done. So this especially refers to uh, the sign of Capricorn. So now what is happening is Saturn is currently in Aquarius. So he has already moved to Aquarius, as I said, right? Uh, end of April, he moved. So therefore, when Saturn moved into Aquarius, there is some level of optimism in the world. Optimism in the sense like uh, now people feel that, yes, we have worked enough and now we need the results of our work now when i say work i don't mean work in your profession or career or uh work in uh, any business or anything necessarily 
I, uh, it can be work in any area of your life. It could be work in area of your health, your married life, your children, your property purchase, vehicle, or anything. It could be depending on the houses that Saturn rules in your chart as per your ascendant, right? So, for example, if you're Aries Lagna, then Saturn rules your 10th house, 11th house, right? And so on. So, uh, whichever houses Saturn rules in your chart, you might have started developing some level of ultra optimism when it comes to Aquarius, right? Uh, from end of April. But optimism is only going to work provided it is backed with hard work, all right? So therefore, you got to check which Mahadasha are you running? Which Antadasha are you running? How are they related to the houses that Saturn rules in your chart, right? So for example, as I said, if you are Aries Lagna and Saturn is your 10th Lord, is your 11th Lord, and then you are running the Mahadasha of um, any planet. Let's take the example of Sun, right? Sun is the king after all. <laughs> so imagine you are running Sun Mahadasha and Sun is placed in the sixth house, right? So now sixth house shows profession. Uh, it can show separation within marriage because of work. It can show work stress, hard work. It can show skill uh, and so on, right? It's primarily related to profession. It could also be diseases, right? Let's take the case of profession here. So you are running Sun Mahadasha and any Antar Dasha, maybe Sun, Mercury, Venus, any, 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 any Antar Dasha, but the focus is on the profession, right? Because the Mahadasha Lord is sitting in the sixth house, for example. And now the sixth house and the tenth house are very uh, have a lot of things in common. Why do I say tenth house? Because Saturn for Aries is the tenth lord, is also the eleventh lord, right? So the 6th house, 10th house, and the 11th house, they are primarily houses of wealth, profession, name, fame, power, position, authority, uh, diligence, skill, and uh, popularity, and all this. So therefore, it could be very well possible that if you are Aries Lagna and you are running a Sun Mahadasha with Sun in the 6th house, then uh, it could happen that you have developed a lot of optimism about your profession and you applied for that dream job or, or you applied for a promotion, but you did not get it, right? Why? Because the thing is, it could be that you do not have the necessary skill set which is required uh, to get that job. Now, you may say, oh, but that we, oh, we always know, right? There's a problem with skills. So uh, why only skill set? Why do I say skill set? Because for Aries, Saturn rules the 10th and the 11th. So depending on your ascendant, it will vary uh, what you lack and what you expected to get, right? So therefore, check your horoscope, check your ascendant, lagna, your rising sign, and then check where is Capricorn and Aquarius, right? And then you can understand what are the things that you need and what are the things that uh, you, 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 you need to really uh, get those houses in working, okay? And... The interesting thing is during this uh, transit, Saturn will be in Dhanishta Nakshatra during the entire time, basically, right? So it's interesting because Dhanishta Nakshatra is actually related to celebrations, right? It's related to beating the drums, right? So did it happen that you, you were so much interested in beating the drums, drums of victory, drums of success, that you actually never got success? It, it, it could happen with you that you went and did so many things or you projected you told the people that you had done this i did this and i will do this 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 is this but at the end it could uh, be very much possible that you are lacking the basics so therefore uh, wherever capricorn is in your horoscope uh, you need to understand that that is the house which could show the things that you necessarily need to improve upon right and also when I uh, speak of these lordships and placements and examples, uh, many times people tell me, can you show with an example chart and uh, so that we can understand better? Well, I have so many videos on example charts, right? So you can type in YouTube uh, exotic astrology example charts because when I speak about all these houses and transits and dashas, it becomes difficult for somebody who is not aware of the basics. So I have a lot of videos on Mahadashas, Antardashas, Nakshatras, calculations, 
uh, Ashtag Varga. So you can please go and watch the Astrology Basics playlist and OMG Astrology Secrets playlist. You can especially watch the example charts where I have explained in detail for many, many, many professions, right? Uh, starting from engineering, doctor, uh, bureaucrats, politicians, and uh, creativity, so many, right? So that will help you to understand in case you are feeling difficulty understanding what I'm saying. And finally, Dhanishta Nakshatra is also related to uh, Lord Shiva, right? Uh, the Dhammu, which Lord Shiva plays, it's like the drum, right? So Therefore, uh, it, it, is, it is very much possible that you might have uh, beaten the drums before your success. So now what do you do? Do you go and uh, say everybody that you didn't become successful, right? It could happen in any area of your life. But it doesn't make sense to do, to do that or to not do that. What is important is that you check in your life. Which are the areas you are trying to improve? Just go down, sit and meditate for five minutes. Ask yourself this question. Which area of life am I desperately trying to improve? Which is that one area of life? Forget astrology, forget your lagna, forget moon sign, sun sign, forget everything, forget Saturn, forget retrogression. Just ask this one question to yourself. Which is that one damn area of my life I'm trying to improve, but I'm not able to do it, Right. Why am I not able to do it? Did I expect more or did I miscalculate something? Okay, so go and do this calculation. And it is also interesting you study a bit about Shravan Nakshatra because we have Shravan Nakshatra, then we have Dhanishta Nakshatra, right? So Shravan Nakshatra is the one which is previous to Dhanishta Nakshatra. And Shravan Nakshatra is actually the Nakshatra of silence, okay? Now, uh, therefore, uh, last year and before when, you know, Saturn was in Shravana, there's a lot of introspective work that we might have done regarding certain areas of our life. But now it's time again, we do some serious introspection, right? Because um, it could be possible that we might have done some miscalculation and that is why the output is not as per our expectation. So therefore, you got to understand that depending on the houses that Saturn is indicating, I mean, ruling in your chart, depending on your ascendant, you will need to develop the necessary skills pertaining to that house, right? So skills does not mean uh, some skill to uh, write uh, programming or anything. It can be anything, right? Skill related to your health. You may be going to the gym. Imagine you are a Capricorn or a Capricorn Lagna, right? You are going to the gym uh, expecting that, oh, wow, I will have this magical change in the next three months, right? But then what do you do after going to the gym, right? So maybe you are you have started doing yoga. Maybe you have started doing um, high intensity interval training. You have started doing cardio, whatever, something. But then you realize that I'm not getting results. But you want to understand that, uh, did you have a plan in the first place, right? So whenever there is a problem with Saturn, it, it's primarily an indication of a lack of plan because uh, Saturn can sometimes give you this feeling that, oh, I will keep doing and as the way comes, you know, I will be getting the results and maybe I will see accordingly. But this may not be the best approach. It may not work every time because at times you may feel lost, right? And Saturn also represents darkness. So there may be some area in your life where you might feel that you are lost. It's like you are completely dark. What should I do now, right? So therefore, uh, during the sign of Capricorn, uh, whenever you talk of Capricorn, you have to understand uh, that Jupiter is the planet with, which gets debilitated there, okay? We, which means Jupiter represents your hope and optimism, which is at the lowest, right? So therefore, if you feel that there is something which you uh, which is blocking you uh, beyond a certain extent and it is uh, taking a toll on your mental health or physical health or intellectual health or spiritual health or uh, health uh, regarding your relationships, then it may be a good time to seek advice from a guru, guide or a counselor because we have the example of uh, Gajendra Moksha in the Srimad Bhagavatam which is related to uh, the sign of Capricorn, right? And Jupiter is the elephant, which is Gajendra. And crocodile uh, is represented by Capricorn, of course, right? So uh, therefore, you got to understand that if you feel that 
there is a problem and you are not able to gain help, then you got to study this Gajendra Moksha story because the Gajendra Moksha pastime is a very informative pastime for anybody who feels lost, hopeless, uh, and uh, one who feels that they are surrounded by darkness, right? So to give a short recap of the pastime, uh, Gajendra was a very powerful elephant in the heavenly planets. This story is there in the Srimad Bhagavatam. If you have read this, then please write it down in the comments. Which canto is this story there, right? So please read this story. Uh, so there, there, this elephant, he was uh, going for playing uh, water sports. Like <laughs> It's like a heavenly water park, right? So he went to this uh, big river and then as soon as he went down, there was this crocodile who caught his leg and uh, elephant is extremely powerful. But the problem is you are not in land now, you are in the water, right? So Gajendra could not um, fight with this uh, crocodile and this deadly crocodile would uh, never let go of him, right? And then gradually Gajendra, his power over hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years, he was fighting with this crocodile. And then at the end, he understood that my situation is pathetic. It's terrible. I am on the verge of death now. I cannot fight alone with this uh, crocodile. This crocodile is like the crocodile of death who has caught my leg and my life here is moving out. So uh, what should I do now? right? And Gajendra, he was a very great personality. Uh, he was uh, Indra Dhyumna Raja in his previous lifetime. He was a very great devotee of Lord Vishnu. And therefore, suddenly he uh, remembered those prayers which he used to give, right? And he took a lotus and he offered it to Lord Vishnu. And immediately, uh, Lord Vishnu appeared in his Garuda with his uh, carrier Garuda. And he took the Sudarshan Chakra and he chopped off the head of this crocodile, right? And the crocodile was also a, a great personality who had got a curse, actually. Uh, he was a hoo, hoo His name was hoo, hoo in the previous life. So he was also liberated and Gajendra also was liberated, right? So therefore, you got to understand that at times when you feel that it's pitch dark, you can't see anything, then maybe reading the Gajendra Moksha pastime is the best thing that you can do, right? So I will give a link to the Gajendra Moksha story down below. And if you are interested, you can go and read it. And along with it, you should understand that please develop your skills. If you are not aware, then read books, take online courses, find a mentor, and get yourself well acquainted with the things related to the houses that Saturn rules in your chart, especially wherever Capricorn is. Because that is something which you might be lacking and that is something which you will need to develop yourself. All right. Thank you very much for your patience. Once again, if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to it down below. And if you want a consultation, you will find my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and read the Gajendra Moksha pastime and then he will definitely help you. Thank you.